Happy Easter, crypto fam. Welcome to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis, as well as the historical Bitcoin prices on Easter day. And check it, someone just bought 1.1 billion worth of Bitcoin, as 70,000 could be another nation state buying. We'll be discussing it. We'll also be discussing, here's why record level US debt will propel Bitcoin to greater heights, according to the Strike CEO, Jack Maulers. Also, Bitcoin's tapping into $84 trillion market, as Bitcoin adoption is now overwhelming, according to billionaire Mike Novogratz. We'll also be discussing a thousand billionaires begin five 5.2 trillion transfer of wealth, and the hairs of billionaires have their own ambitions. I'll be breaking down this report, as well as the SEC spot Ether ETF concerns are unfounded, according to consensus assertions. We'll also be discussing BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF holdings now soar past 252,000 BTC. The CEO Larry Fink says he is pleasantly surprised by the retail demand. We'll also be discussing the Bitcoin price hitting 1 million per coin within the next 12 to 18 months as per the CEO. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more here on Easter Sunday. Holla at your boy. If you're new to the channel, be sure to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also important to pump that thumbs up by, by pumping those likes. You're helping to pump the stream, and it helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm. Let's kick it off, but first, I got to also say, today is pod episode number 1595. I'm your host, JV, and it's March 31st, 2024. Happy Easter. Christ has risen Hallelujah, fam. Now, uh, let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Bitcoin already took 71,000 this morning or on the cusp of reclaiming it at 70,900 at the time of the live. We have Ether back above 3,600 while Solana, XRP, Cardano, and AVAX all correcting and in the red. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. The current crypto market cap sits at 2.67 trillion with 62 billion in volume for the past 24 hours with the Bitcoin dominance at 52% and the Ether dominance back on the rise after tapping in the, what was it, 15.9 yesterday. Today, we're 16.3. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours. But first, quick shout out to Fernando. I greatly appreciate the super. He wrote, Hammy will be the next whiff. But anyways, the top 100 gainers are Core, Flare, Pendle, and Whiff. And uh, which alt are you guys most bullish on during this bull run? Please do let me know. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective on the day. Safe to say roughly 80% of the market is in the red with 20% pumping with core lead in the pack up over 52%. Zooming out on the monthly to get a more of a broader perspective. You can see it's been alt season for quite some time. Pretty respective gainers here from Pepe up 200%, Core 200%, Floki 350%, and Whiff 420%. Happy 420. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. We're currently rated as 75 greed. Yesterday, 75. Last week, a 74. And last month, an 80 in extreme greed. And checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown. Yesterday, it said 17 days, but today it recalculated to 21 days, meaning the estimated date of the halving is set to take place April 22nd, literally three weeks from now. We're on the current block of 837,100. As soon as we hit 840,000, Bitcoin having is here. And currently, you can get 1,416 Satoshis for a dollar. Take advantage of that. And the Bitcoin market cap is sitting at $1.39 trillion dollars. So there you have it. Happy Easter, fam. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Anyways, fam, let's dive into a little technical analysis. Check out what's popping and what's happening here Easter Sunday. For the markets, uh, headline reads, WIF and these assets explode by double digits weekly as Bitcoin maintains $70,000. That's right. The previous weekend was quite similar to this one with little to no substantial price movements. That changed on Monday and Tuesday as Bitcoin went on a tear, shut up by over four grand. This meant it returned to over 70,000 for the first time in a few weeks. In fact, again, we eclipsed 71,000 already this morning. The bulls propelled another leg up on Wednesday, resulting in Bitcoin's 
soaring to a 15-day peak, just under 72 Gs. Nevertheless, the bear stepped in and initiated a 3,000 retracement before Bitcoin started recovering some ground as the net flows for the spot ETF return the positive. Not much happened by the end of the week, and during the weekend, at least for now, Bitcoin is back around 71,000, closing the gap on a 1.4 trillion market cap. The altcoins have been doing quite well, as well as I pointed out earlier, but we're going to focus on Bitcoin here on Easter Sunday. Uh, anything else is blasphemous, just saying. But according to Bitcoin Magazine, as they shared here, historical Bitcoin prices on Easter Day. Check it out. 2012, $4.86. 2013, 92 bucks. Now, keep in mind, we had a halving 2012. The year after the halving is when we hit the cycle peak. So yeah, hence, look at that, from five bucks to $92 within one year. Like, whoa. Then 2014, it was $457. 2015, $244. Reminder, bear market. Then 2016, the next halving occurred, 416 bucks. The year following, $1,071. That's, that's right, the same year Bitcoin hit 20,000. That was December by the end of the year. And 2018, uh, $7,000 Bitcoin price, 2019, 4,100. 2020, next halving occurs, we're at 6,448. The year preceding the halving, Bada boom, bada bing, 58,000, baby. Then 2022, year of the bear, 45,000. 2023, 28,000. Now 2024, year of the halving, 70,500. Not too shabby. Where do you think we'll be this time next year? Holla. I'm anticipating multiple six figures. That's just me. Let me know your thoughts, family. And uh, also, I think this was yesterday. Someone just bought $1.1 billion worth of Bitcoin at $70,000. That's a pretty big buy, family. Could it be another nation, state, stacking in biddies? Let me know your thoughts. And I'm going to give you a little bonus story because I like Jack Maulers and he was in the headlines here. Uh, the headline reads, here's why record level U.S. debt will propel Bitcoin to greater heights, according to the Strike CEO. Jack Maulers. That's right. In a new interview with Bloomberg, Mahler says the U.S. has no way of paying off its record high, $34.5 trillion debt. According to Maulers, he sees government eventually turning on the money printers, issuing more dollars to meet its financial obligations. Quitting him here, our government is in debt. Traditionally, if I owed you 20 bucks, I'd have two options. I'd, one, have to default on that. The other is I could pay it back. Those are classically the two options that anyone in debt has, right? Now, the government, because they centrally plan and control our currency, unfortunately, has a third, and that's they can just print more money to value the debt, and then they have uh, you know, what they owe and allocate more capital to themselves so our government can't default. The U.S., cannot default on debt. It would collapse the entire planet. <laughs> we also cannot afford to pay it back. This is just one-on-one -on -one basics of how the world works. If we can't default and we can't pay it back, what's the only option? That's to print more. Hence, expect more money printing from the Fed. But going back to his quote, because I was paraphrasing there, what's the only option that they have to do no matter what? they set and tell you is that the Fed chair meetings and all the economists, they have to issue more dollars. With more dollars in the system, Mahler's believes that the surplus of fiat currency will find its way to assets with a limited supply, like Bitcoin, quoting him again. So if there's going to be more pieces of green paper, you want them competing for the most fixed thing. There are more dollars that are competing for a fixed amount of Bitcoin. Yes, real estate is going to go up too, because there is more dollars competing for real estate. But they can make more real estate. They can find more gold. They can't make any more Bitcoin. Facts. And to watch this interview he recently did with Bloomberg, check the show notes below the video in the description. I mean, that's pretty alarming. What is that? $34.5 trillion of debt. We know they can't pay it back. The only option they really have is to print more money. This is one of the many reasons we're so bullish on Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a fixed supply, 21 million coins. Uh, real estate doesn't have a fixed supply. As he mentioned, they can create more. Gold doesn't have a fixed supply. They can just discover more on the planet. So Bitcoin is the only currency with a finite, limited supply. Hence why it's 71,000 approximately per coin. <laughs> I mean, 71,000 US dollars, and we're just getting started. But let's dive into our next story of the day here. Easter Sunday, family, pump the likes to pump the stream, show your support for Christ, show your support for Bitcoin, and show your support for crypto news alerts. Greatly appreciated. 
The headline here reads, Bitcoin tapping into $84 trillion market, Bitcoin adoption now overwhelming, according to billionaire Mike Novogratz, the one with the infamous Luna tattoo on his arm. Can't make this ish up. But anyways, Novogratz believes that Bitcoin now has access to an $84 trillion market following the approval of Bitcoin spot market ETFs. Speaking to the Bitcoin Investor Day event in New York, the billionaire says Bitcoin is witnessing a dramatic increase in adoption with the launch of the ETFs. He also says the ETF salesmen will have no problem selling Bitcoin to participants of the $84 trillion market due to the mountain of debt accumulated by the U.S. government. Quoting him here, right now adoption is way overwhelming because we have just tapped into a new market. So here are the numbers. There is $84 trillion worth of wealth owned by the U.S. baby boomers. Baby boomers are broadly 60 to 80 years old. They broadly invest through registered investment advisors. You call your broker at Dean Witter or Morgan Stanley or A.J. Edwards and say, hey, what's my portfolio? Put a little bit here. That is the ETF process, and it just started. And so early, big adoption. A lot of the smaller platform regional brokers have been buying, but a lot of the big platforms like Morgan Stanley, they're still not selling yet. They are going to, they're getting prepared to, you can buy it on their platform, but their salesmen aren't selling it. One thing I've learned about Bitcoin, it's always sold. It is not bought. Somebody sits down and explains it to you. What's the macro story of Bitcoin? It's relatively simple. Our government can't keep its pants on <laughs> and is spending too much money. When you spend more money than you can take in, you depreciate your currency. I think that's worthy of a repeat. What's the macro story of Bitcoin? It's relatively simple. Our government can't keep its pants on. <laughs> it is spending too much money. When you spend more money than you take in, you depreciate your currency. Very well said there, Novogratz. And I guess that's why we hedge against our government with Bitcoin, because we know that money printer will continue to do its thing. Yeah, I mean, figuratively speaking here, metaphorically speaking. Anyways, fam, let's dive into our next story of the day. Uh, yeah, the headline reads, 1,000 billionaires begin 5.2 trillion transfer of wealth, and the hairs to billionaires have their own ambitions, according to this report. This is pretty interesting. An astonishing and historic transfer of wealth amongst the world's super rich continues accelerating, according to this new report. More than 1,000 billionaires are moving an estimated 5.2 trillion to their brethren at an increasing pace, says Swiss banking giant UBS and its latest billionaire ambitions report. The transfer, which is expected to last for the next 20 to 30 years, already has the hairs of billionaires gaining st stature, with new billionaires acquiring more wealth through inheritance than entrepreneurship for the first time on record, quoting the report. Why does this matter? Because the coming generation has fresh views about business, investment, and philanthropy. Many are redirecting the large pools of private wealth they control to new business opportunities arising from the times we live in. What's more, they have been and are influenced by the difficult times, pandemic, climate change, a less stable world order, and war. So according to the report, most billionaires are primarily concerned about geopolitical tensions and inflation while viewing AI as the most promising commercial opportunity in the near term. I mean, the chart doesn't lie. Artificial intelligence is the technology offering one of the biggest commercial opportunities to the operating businesses. And below artificial intelligence, we have automation and robotics, big data analytics, health tech, cloud computing, cybersecurity, fintech, yada, yada, yada. So when surveyed, UBS says those inheriting their wealth appear relatively reluctant to give money to charity. But the group has a rising interest in backing sustainable and altruistic endeavors, quoting the report again. While there are several well-publicized cases of billionaire entrepreneurs pledging much of their fortunes to philanthropy, uh, excuse me, of uh, philanthropic causes, it is Less well known that those with inherited wealth seem more reticent or reticent. In fact, while there are more than two thirds, which is 68% of the first generation billionaires, stated following their uh, philanthropic goals and making an impact on the world was a main objective to their legacy, less than a third, 32% of the inherited generations actually did so. However, there is a trend towards impact investing or managing businesses in ways that address environmental and social issues for both commercial and altruistic ends. This survey uh, finding 
may reflect a shift amongst hairs away from classic grant giving philanthropy and towards delivering sustainable outcomes across all activities. The report concludes billionaire Harris have a vital role to play on the world stage with the power to help push the technological and environmental transformation that's fair to society. Now, as of mid-2023, UBS says the total number of billionaires around the world hit 2,544, a year-over-year increase of 7%. So that's not that many, 2,544 billionaires. A total of 1,000 of these billionaires are at least 70 years old. So we have a thousand billionaires already over 70 years old, leaving roughly 1,500 billionaires less than uh, 70 years old. But anyways, fam, next story of the day. Let's discuss the latest with the Ethereum ETF. The headline reads, the SEC's spot Ether ETF concerns are unfounded. Consensus asserts, that's right, consensus addressed the U.S. SEC's inquiry about potential fraud and manipulation risks related to Ethereum's proof-of-stake system, particularly concerning the spot Ether ETFs. In a comment letter submitted to the regulatory agency, consensus, the blockchain and Web3 software development company responsible for the popular MetaMask wallet, stated that concerns about fraud and manipulation are baseless, quoting them here. In fact, Ethereum uh, proof of stake is implementation meeting and exceeding the security of Bitcoin's proof of work, which underlies Bitcoin's base ETFs that have already been approved for trading by the SEC. The Ethereum infrastructure firm highlighted Ethereum's advantages. Quicker block finality than Bitcoin, a division of responsibilities between proposers and attesters to deter stakeholder dominance, higher attack costs, penalties for validator rule violations, the superior environmental sustainability compared to Bitcoin. Consensus highlighted that Ethereum boasts a large developer community than Bitcoin and operates on a fully transparent and public blockchain. Consensus urged the SEC to acknowledge Ethereum's superior security features. Now, I don't agree with everything consensus says here, family, just FYI, I'm just reading you the article. Surpassing those of Bitcoin-based ETPs previously approved by the SEC. And although spot Bitcoin ETFs have proven exceptionally popular, whether or not a spot Ether ETF will be approved in May or this year remains debatable. How many of you think the SEC gives the green light for the Ether ETF spot uh, this year in 2024? Let me know. Now, the final SEC deadline for approving or denying the next round of spot Ether ETFs ETF apps will come May 23rd, starting with Van X investment vehicle. Though many experts seem to be optimistic about the approval in 2023, some have suggested going into 2024 that the commission could deny those applications. Several firms have spot Ether ETF apps pending approval or denial, including Fidelity, Hashdex, and ARC21 shares. The SEC began approving investment vehicles tied to Ether futures back in October 2023. Some would speculate it's going to take a lawsuit against the SEC for them to finally approve it, kind of similar to what we saw with the Bitcoin ETFs. Now, crypto gamblers are placing bets on whether the spot Ether ETFs will be approved by the US SEC before May 31st. First, personally, I don't think that's going to happen. The overall bets on the ETF outcomes have reached at least 12 million on the predictions market. Now, you got to be, in my opinion, pretty degenerate to be betting on whether or not the SEC will approve the ETF. Just saying, just put your money in Bitcoin. And uh, that's the end of it. The SEC eventually approved the trading and listing of 11 spot ETFs, as we know, on January 10th for Bitcoin. Investment management company Grayscale expressed confidence in the favorable decision by the SEC for spot E3 ETFs by May. On March 25th, Grayscale chief legal officer Craig Salm said the SEC's perceived lack of engagement with applicants does not indicate whether an ETF will be approved. So let me know your thoughts. Do you think we get this ETF this year. I think eventually they'll get it, but I'm not so hopeful it'll be this year or by mid this year, potentially later this year or next year. More probable, in my opinion, that's with a lawsuit. Let's dive into our next story of the day. Let's discuss this uh, 252,000 Bitcoin and then a 1 million price prediction. All hail Nipsey in the background, the one and only I should have dressed them like a, a bunny. That would have actually been qu quite funny. But nonetheless, this headline reads, BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETFs holding soar past 252,000 BTC, clearly surpassing MicroStrategy. And Lawrence Fink says he's pleasantly surprised by the retail demand. 
That's right. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, has significantly increased the Bitcoin holdings for the spot Bitcoin ETF, the iShares Bitcoin Trust, better known as iBit. The iShares Bitcoin Trust currently holds 252,000 bitties, representing an approximate notional value of nearly $18 billion. Not too shabby for less than three months of uh, accumulation. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said this week that he is very bullish on the long-term viability of Bitcoin, noting that the iShares Bitcoin Trust is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs, and nothing has gained assets as fast as iBit in the history of ETFs. Quoting him here, I am pleasantly surprised, and I have never have I predicted it before we filed it, and we are going to see this type of retail demand. The U.S. SEC approved 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs. January 11th was the actual launch date. And the last one, the Hashdex Bitcoin ETF, which converted from a Bitcoin futures ETF, began trading just last week. Now, Robert Michitnik, BlackRock's head of digital assets, recently emphasized that for the firm's clients, Bitcoin is overwhelmingly the number one priority. I respond or repeat that for BlackRock's clients, Bitcoin is overwhelmingly the number one priority. There is no second best. It's going up forever, Laura. He further revealed, and then a little bit, Ethereum and very little everything else. Now, something I want to also point out that kind of flew under the radar, and this was a couple of years ago, BlackRock published a study recommending their uh, Bitcoin portfolio allocation recommendation, 84.9%, virtually 85%. Now, obviously, that's a tremendous asset allocation for any big asset manager like a BlackRock controlling roughly $10 trillion in assets under management. But hypothetically speaking, what if BlackRock has plans of actually putting 85% of their portfolio into the apex predator? And what if other asset managers did the same? That's when we get these insane $100 million type price predictions, 300 trillion of capital flooding into Bitcoin. Yesterday's pod, if you missed it, it was ultimately Max Kaiser prediction talking about how Bukele, uh, you know, president of El Salvador and uh, Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy or the founder of MicroStrategy. I don't know if he's still officially the CEO. I think he stepped down a while back, but nonetheless, their speculative attack on the central bank and the banking system in general by borrowing money, like borrowing billions of dollars and buying biddies, um, could send 300 trillion of capital into Bitcoin because this is a blueprint that other corporations uh, like MicroStrategy that are cash heavy and other nation states like El Salvador are capable of doing is a blueprint of borrowing money for less than 1% interest, not having to pay it back for years. And how much does Bitcoin go up on average each year? Like roughly 200%. So what's a 1% interest rate? It ultimately means there is a loophole to borrow unlimited amounts of money to buy Bitcoin. What if other companies started to do the same in other nations or sovereign wealth funds, etc. It just gets your mind like really racing on what's really possible here. Uh, shout out David Sam upgraded his membership to the micro strategy. Well done. I uh, appreciate that. I appreciate all the members here um, of the channel. Now, clearly 85% is pretty bullish. Uh, I don't think that would be overnight, but what if over the long haul, 10 years or something like that? Now, what if they just allocated 5%, that's going to take us probably beyond seven-figure Bitcoin price. So we have to keep all this in mind, how simple it really is with how much capital there is in the world. If much of that capital goes into the apex predator, which I believe it will eventually, we can have these insane price predictions come to fruition. But let me know your thoughts, family. But anyways, fam, without further ado, now let's dive into our featured story of the day. The Bitcoin price can hit a million dollars per coin within the next 12 to 18 months per this CEO of Off The Chain Capital. So let's break this baby down. Welcome everyone just joining the stream and happy Easter Sunday. Let's get it. As you can see here in the headline, during a recent discussion amongst Bitcoin market analysts and educators, the potential price impact of the April halving was the focus. So let's discuss having three weeks out, family. That's right. Between
between roundtable anchor Rob Nelson and a group of industry experts, including Adam Swick, the chief growth officer of Marathon Digital Holdings, Brian Dixon from Off the Chain Capital, and Austin Arnold of Altcoin Daily, and Natalie Brunel of Coin Stories. The future of Bitcoin was the center of debate, as it should be. Shout out to Kelly. I greatly appreciate that super. She wrote Happy Easter and FJB. Amen to that. I'm going to repeat it. Happy Easter and FJB. Thank you, family. The conversation featuring personal insights and forecasts delved into the anticipated impacts of the upcoming Bitcoin halving, price predictions for the future, and the potential milestone of Bitcoin reaching that seven-figure milestone family. Swick shared nuanced insight into the cyclical nature of Bitcoin's price movements, especially in relation to the anticipated halving event scheduled to take place here in roughly three weeks. Swick described a pattern where hype builds up leading to such an event, followed by a phase of disillusionment only for the interest and excitement to pick back up. Drawing parallels with the reception of the recently approved spot Bitcoin ETFs, he outlined a scenario where similar dynamics could play out around the halving. His personal price forecast for the upcoming Bitcoin halving cycle ranges from ninety dollars to $120,000, hinging on the crypto's ability to breach the formidable 100000 barrier, which he believes can lead to higher valuations. Now, Dixon, who is more bullish, offered his own bullish perspective, suggesting the possibility of Bitcoin reaching $1 million per coin in as short as a time frame as the next 12 to 18 months, virtually the cycle peak, acknowledging this as the optimistic scenario. Dixon highlighted the significance of having events as potential catalysts for dramatic price increases, underpinning his outlook with a sense of cautious optimism about Bitcoin's capacity for unprecedented growth. Now, Arnold took a broader view, emphasizing Bitcoin's unique position as the first asset in human history for which the supply remains unaffected by demand. He speculated on Bitcoin's value trajectory, drawing comparisons with gold, suggesting the Bitcoin's inherent qualities could not only match but surpass those of the precious metal. Arnold projected that Bitcoin could reach a valuation of 500 per coin before 2030, positing that uh, the decade could see the crypto break past the 1 million mark and eventually see as more of a question of when rather than if. Now for Natalie Brunel, she rounded out the discussion with a forward-looking analysis. Shout out Natalie Brunel. Agreeing with the potential for Bitcoin to achieve the 1 million valuation within the 2030s, she underscored the digital currency's capability to challenge and possibly exceed the gold market cap. Now, while also cautioning investors about the volatile journey ahead, Brunel highlighted the importance of patience and long-term vision in navigating the Bitcoin market, advising against premature selling that could prelude investors from participating in the asset's future appreciation. So there you have it, family. What are your thoughts on some of these predictions? I agree that $1 million is inevitable, but the million-dollar question becomes, when could this really occur for this cycle peak? Can it really happen within the next 12 to 18 months? As one of those analysts just projected, I want to know your thoughts on that. We even have Samson Mao, the CEO of Jan3, who has been helping with nation state adoption around the world, speaking with governors in places like Mexico, president of Colombia, etc. He's projecting that Bitcoin can still hit a uh, million dollars, which would mean max paying a uh, million dollars this year. Can you potentially see that happening? I'm not as optimistic that it will happen this year, but I'm also open to the possibility that anything is possible, right? And it can occur. By 2030, I think it's a given. In fact, I've been calling for a 1 million Bitcoin price by the year 2029, just based off the previous cyclical nature of the halvings, where it's the year preceding the halving, we hit the cycle peak. So in uh, this next month coming up tomorrow, uh, in April, in three weeks to be more precise, we're gonna get Bitcoin halving 2024. The year preceding the halving, we're most likely to hit the cycle peak if we remain the same with the four year cycles and the year following the halving hitting the cycle peak. So with that thinking, 2028, 
the next halving after the one in the following month, then the following year, 2029 cycle peak. Now, my prediction has been the bear scenario for this cycle, 222,000. That's my bear scenario, family. My bull scenario has been raised to $750,000 per coin. I think most likely we're gonna be somewhere between that gap. I know it's a wide gap, but hey, it is what it is. Bitcoin has so much potential, it's not even funny. Supply shock happening this year, Bitcoin having around the corner. We still have massive unprecedented ETF inflows that are not going to slow down. BlackRock now has over 250,000 Bitcoin. MicroStrategy now has like over 200,000 Bitcoin controlling 1% of the circulating supply. That's not going to slow down. We have nation state adoption. We have sovereign wealth fund adoption. We have more ETFs, which haven't even launched yet. We have the presidential election of 2024. A lot of catalysts right now, right? We have hyperinflation occurring, right? They claim to have inflation under control. Don't worry, guys. We got it under control. Uh, less than 3%. Everything is great. Oh, the banks couldn't be more strong right now. Everything is... No. That's the BS they tell you, right? We can't listen to anything these criminals tell us. They don't deserve our trust, right? We got to watch what they do. We know there was a regional banking crisis last year. We know the regional banking situation didn't get any better. More banks are most likely to fail. We know people don't trust the banks, right? They're ripping people off left and right. Look at Jamie Demon, for Christ's sake, of J.P. Morgan Chase. I mean, if I had my money in a bank right now, I want to know what I do? Exactly what I did when I got into Bitcoin. I'd take it out and I'd buy Bitcoin and I'd borrow as much money as the bank allows me to borrow, right? And I'd buy Bitcoin with it. The same blueprint that, you know, Sailor and Bukele are using. The only difference, I didn't get that 0.6% interest rate. But nonetheless, borrow as much money as you can if you're in a position to pay it back, family. If you believe in Bitcoin and you're going to be hodling for the long term, that's the play, right? Speculative attack against these banking cartels that want to see you poor and eating bugs at the end of the day. That's why when you put fee into the bank via the fractional reserve banking system, you get virtually no interest. In fact, you lose money via the melting ice cube due to inflation. Inflation is not going to slow down. More than likely, they're going to continue to print, as I pointed out earlier, as Jack Muller's called it, because that's the only option they have. So if they're going to continue to print, you want to have your money in Bitcoin, because it's mathematically guaranteed to increase your purchasing power, whereas fiat Tulip bulb monopoly money is guaranteed to decrease your purchasing power. What happened in Argentina? Inflation. Their currency lose 250% of its value this year. That's not going to slow down, right? So if you're looking for the ultimate hedge against corrupt governments, uh, looking for a hedge against inflation, a hedge against deflation, you're looking for incorruptible money, you're looking for unconfiscatable money, pristine collateral, all that good stuff. Uh, you're looking for a flight to safety, as Mr. Lawrence Fink calls it. Look no further than BTC and stop listening to the FUD. Stop listening to the Peter Schiff Stop listening to that old man or any old man yelling at Bitcoin, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Bitcoin is the future. Fiat is the past. You want to get with the future or do you want to live in the past? Do you want your pockets living in the past or in the future? The choice is yours. When do you feel we'll get this $1 million Bitcoin price as we've been discussing here today on this fabulous Easter Sunday? Holla at your boy. And let me know. And massive shout out to David Sam. He just sent a $40 super. That's very generous of you, fam. He wrote, thanks for working on Easter. My wife and I appreciate you. FJB. And I got to read that again. Thank you for working on Easter. My wife and I appreciate you. FJB. And if you agree, put a FJB in that live chat. Let's get that viral today. Hashtag FJB. Let's get that viral on X. Let's get that viral across the world. Only thing we're celebrating today, Easter and Christ. Nothing else, nothing satanic, F them, right? Anyone promoting Satanism, F them, right? Our nation shouldn't be promoting, I mean, it's sad because this is the leader, <laughs> this is the leader of America promoting this blasphemy on the holy day. Not acceptable, FJB, 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 let's go. That's right. FJB, FJB, FJB. I love it, family. I greatly appreciate y'all. And uh, it's my honor to do a show on Easter Sunday, by the way. So I'm just playing my part and doing what I do best. Preaching the Holy Gospel of Satoshi. FJB, FJB, FJB. 
Thank you. Thank you. Let's go, Brandon. FJB.